Hello, welcome to the Wasting Time podcast. I am your host, Chris. Still by myself. Nick, Nick's had a, had a lot going on with uh, obviously being the new father, and I'm, I'm just keeping the ship going with these interviews. I do promise I have one with him. I have two with him, actually, coming up very, very soon. So for now, I, I'll keep this intro keep this intro nice and short. One thing I will say is Love Breakers have their song Spark, which it has come out today. So wherever you get your music, please check that out. We'd really appreciate that. Um, so with that said, let's get into today's interview, which was, is with Alex Melton, who's, uh, who's, who's carved quite the career for himself on YouTube. He also has an album out today, Southern Charm. Go check that out. Anyway, here's the interview. Hello, everyone. I am joined today by YouTube star Alex Melton. How's it going, man? Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm feeling good. Uh, where, where are you, by the way? So I am sort of southwest of London, about 20 minutes out of London, uh, near a place called Kingston. Um, okay. I've, I've historically always been based in London, but I've, I've moved sort of to the suburbs recently. But, but broadly, that's where I am. What about yourself? Okay. Uh, I'm in uh, South Carolina. Um, you know, it, it, it's I'm uh, de- definitively in the South. We'll say I'm, okay. I'm very entrenched in it. Uh, so you're you're. It's like afternoon there. I think. Is that- yeah, we've just just turned four o'clock here. What were okay. you like? Are you are you EST out there? Were you like five hours behind us? Something like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm still getting used to all the. Uh, the different time zones I need to be aware of. <laughs> <laughs> have you, um, with with the press for this record, which we'll actually get into at the top of this interview, but like, have you been doing a lot of press for that, like speaking to people around the world recently? Well, it's, it's I guess any press is a lot of press to me because I'm all kind of new to this. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, I've, I've been doing a lot of stuff from across the pond, as they say. Um, and it's been, it's been really cool to talk to, you know, people that, you know, live in completely different parts of the world that are somehow aware of me. It's it's kind of wild, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I saw you did. I saw you did um, the Sappanin podcast. Yeah, that was really fun. Yeah, I was kind. Of, it's always funny because like if if there's a, an album coming out and then someone's kind of doing press and then it that can happen quite a lot. Like we'll do the same people. Like as a lot of the the podcasts who would kind of cover a similar. A similar mm-hmm. road to us so i'm always like do i like dive into that interview so i've got like my research there but then it's like well i don't want to just ask him the same questions and stuff so it's kind of that that's always a tricky one but yeah yeah you know it, it i i've found that i tend to uh give different answers to the same questions <laughs> when prompted. so you know that's, that kind of keeps it fresh <laughs> that's a good way of doing it yeah so at the time of recording with what the the records about to come out right is it out on friday i believe so what you know however they thursday at midnight friday right, morning right. that thing so yeah so you your people sent me the record a few weeks ago um it's a lot of fun man um <laughs> thank you <laughs> how, how are you how are you feeling about it i i do youtube you know weekly videos on youtube of course and um it's it's such a quick turnaround for me I, you know I, i'm working on an idea on monday i'm tracking Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm finishing yeah. the premiere edit on Thursday morning, and then it goes live like as soon as I finish. With this, it's been such a long process, you know, going to different uh, parts of the country, uh, working with different producers, you know, sitting on this material for months. I- I'm so yeah. not used to it, um, but it has given me a chance to, you know, I got really excited about these songs in the studio. And then I kind of got swept up in the daily, you know, grind of things and forgot about them. And then when it was time for the album to come out, I started listening again. I'm like, oh, this is this is actually really good and fun. And I'm glad (laughs) I did this. It it allowed me to have like a almost a new perspective on the whole project when I came back to it, when it was time for everything to happen. So, uh, yeah, it it is. I think that's a great way to put it. It's just a lot of fun. It's, um, you know, it's it's. Uh, experimentation in different genres and and different arrangements and stuff and i think if you're at all a music fan and and um can appreciate you know alternate versions or live versions of songs then there's a lot here to to dive into and appreciate what's your favorite one that you did on this oh man um 
I'll give you I'll give you a favorite from side A, which yeah, is Friends in Low sense. Places. Um, it, it's just so catchy and and like also a little bit heavy. You know, Tom Denny from A Day to Remember. He kind of put his signature style and spin on the production, and it, it sounds That's just awesome. so huge and and like huge, catchy, fun, and bouncy. That's a really good one. Uh, from from side B, I'll say "Married to the Noise" is kind of my sleeper favorite. It's okay. just so out there. We put we just crammed so many instruments in there, um, and it and it's just pure fun track. I love that one. I really enjoyed the uh, the story so far. Mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> that yeah, that's that was a good one. Fun. Yeah. I think that was the first one that we started working on for that half of the record. Okay. Um, I I kind of. I drove all the way up the East Coast to go to Massachusetts and work with Alan Day. And um, Alan, he's been on our show before. Oh, yeah. Great guy. Uh, yeah, so, lovely fella. So gracious and, and creative. And I got in like after like a crazy eight hour drive leg, the last leg of the thing. And, yeah. and we just jumped in immediately. And uh, okay. like on that very day, I'm like, I don't have my suitcase out of the car yet, but, um, you know, let's hit the ground running. And so that was kind of the first one we started on. You mentioned when, when when we first got on this that you you soon heading off for it's kind of like a a weekender of shows I guess is it um is it just the first show that's with the the bloke from Taking Back Sunday or or are you doing all of them with him? It's all all four of those shows are the same. Okay, uh, me and Fred, and then there's different local okay. support for for each one. Yeah, I did a little three date weekend thing last year and. <laughs> You know, I, I say last year, it was literally like a year ago. I, I don't uh, get out much. I don't tour a whole lot. Um, so I'm, I'm especially this is the first um, kind of run of shows that I'm doing in this specific format where I've, I've built, you know, I've pre-recorded a bunch of like tracks, but most yeah. of it's live acoustic. But, you know, there's like things that I, you know, specially made for this run of shows. It's not like I'm just pulling tracks from the the you know the masters on the record or something it, it's all kind of manufactured to be kind of like what i do on youtube you know where i do everything all the parts but in a more realistic grounded way that i can't you know clone myself on tour <laughs> how, how did the relationship with fred come about because I, I i know you put out a video with him comparatively recently as well yeah um so fred has his own youtube channel where he does like playthroughs of different songs. He'll do reactions to new things that come out. He, he actually would uh, react to fan covers of Taking Back Sunday songs. It's, yeah. it's a lot of fun over there. And um, my management just came to me with um, the tour offer from him. So I, I, I think he his camp reached out to me, which was oh, nice. a huge honor. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we, we got it set up and I got on a phone call with him and I was trying my best not to freak out too much. And mm -hmm. Um, I managed to be able to ask him, you know, Hey, you know, let's support the tour by doing this collab together. And that way it'll kind of get both of our channels cross promoted and we can, we can tell people about the tour. And he was like totally down. Um, I sent him the That's treatment awesome. and he, he laid all this crazy guitar solo stuff on top and he did his, his Fred singing thing and, uh, it came out amazing. He's just such a cool guy and he's willing to, um, He's not shy about, you know, sharing his experiences and knowledge. And it's yeah. been it's been really nice to kind of interact with somebody that I I looked up to that band. I had the, you know, the Louder Now DVD, the whole special edition, everything. I yeah, I watched yeah. all that stuff all the time. So it's been really cool to work with Fred. Yeah, it must be surreal for you. Yeah. Um <laughs> I suppose since so, so what I'll do now if it's cool with you is kind of like take it back a little bit, just kind of talk about your journey as to, you know, how how you came to be where you're at today uh, and then we'll kind of there's some more kind of stuff happening now that I want to want to cover as well sure. um but yeah no it's 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 a funny one because I feel like you you have such a presence on YouTube now like I can't I can't remember like personally the first time I saw one of your videos but I guess it would have been sometime in the pandemic or whatever like you know the algorithms were just just hit i think like they're just hitting anyone who kind of follows this kind of music you know so i can mm -hmm. say to any one of my friends like so i said to a few people because um you know we're normally talking to someone who's just from a straightforward band of a certain genre or whatever and i'm like oh you know i'm talking to this guy who's kind of made his name on youtube 
you know, like does like the country versions of, and they're like, oh yeah, the guy who does in Blink One Eighty Two wrote, you know, oh, yes, like everyone yes. knows who you are. So it's kind of <laughs> feels like you've had a crazy couple of years. So you know, like I can just confidently, if, if not necessarily Alex Melton by name, if 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 I sent a link, everyone will be like, oh yeah, yeah, that guy, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just I'm really interested in how you've come to that place. So yeah, I, I've I you know I grew up in South Carolina right on the border of North Carolina. I, um, and, uh, I moved where I am now for university and like, uh, well, yeah, I did from 2008 to 2012. I got a music degree and, um, I kind of, I graduated in 2012 and I I moved back in with my parents. I didn't know what I was going to do. I I grabbed a, a, just a job at, um, at a sandwich place and was trying to figure things out. And, uh, that's when I started the channel. And it was going to be a like a it was going to be a recording right, okay. studio where yeah. I had this YouTube channel where I could put demos of different things I've done and um, you know kind of like a, a CV where you have different you, know, you show new potential clients here's what I can do so it'll be this YouTube channel and so yeah. I was like okay so what's the best way to show off my production you know techniques and everything I'll just record myself. And I got to play something that somebody's actually going to click on. So I get, you know, exposure. And so I picked this Taylor Swift song and um, it immediately did pretty well, um, kind of out the gate. I spent a lot of time, like I went and got a GoPro because that was like the cheapest way you could get HD footage onto YouTube yeah. back then. Uh, yeah. The phones were, were were not not quite as good as they are now. And so, yeah, you know, I spent some time. I was like, all right, I got to light it somehow. And I got to like sit there and, and meticulously learn how to cut together video. And it was a process where, you know, I was really passionate about it. I thought this is going to be the thing that's going to launch my recording studio. And, yeah. Uh, and so that did not work out. I, um, it, you know, I, I was in South Carolina. There's nobody around to record, even if they wanted to. It's not like it was Nashville or LA or some type of hub where right. I could connect right. with other artists. So, you know, I slowly kind of fell out of that desire and that goal. And, and I, I would record, you know, uh, myself doing covers, you know, maybe like, uh, once every couple of months. And, um, and then I got, I got a nice job at a live, uh, venue. And, um, mm-hmm. I was kind of the, like the head guy that was the production manager at this venue. Everything was cool. I was, you know, super busy all the time, but that's kind of how that world is. Yeah. And then, COVID happened and my whole job just got shut down immediately, you know, because there's Mm -hmm. no more concerts, there's no more gathering. Um, and so I, in that moment, I was just sitting at my house with a decent amount of gear I'd collected over the mostly decade I'd been doing it. And I was like, well, if this isn't the best time to give it another shot, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get another opportunity like this. And so, you know, forced to be in my house with nothing else to do, I I started making stuff with more intention and um, I started trying a lot more things and uh, it just started kind of building. You know, I would I would do at people on TikTok and kind of remix different things they were doing. I started doing more pop punk covers and then the country thing was kind of just this joke that I put out that blew up and and right, okay. it was so interesting because that is kind of my life i grew up in the south watching country music videos every morning before we went to school and i was really entrenched in that like pop pop country thing phenomenon that had happened in the 90s early 2000s and then as i grew up i started listening to uh, more alternative stuff like blink 182 and i think some 41 was on one of those now compilation discs. And I, I, yeah, that's where I was exposed to all that. Like they're yelling and there's distorted guitars. This is really cool. And so the country thing, while it did start out as a joke, it really kind of morphed into this uh, expression of my deep love and appreciation for these two genres. Okay. Um, And people, people just connected with it. And then, you know, I, I did this, you know, the Blink-182 thing was, was also kind of like a, a lighthearted, you know, fun, like exercise in how, how would they play a song? Um, there was a couple other people that were kind of doing that, dabbling in that idea at the time. Yeah. And yeah. And so I, I thought it was such an interesting 
concept. And um, so I did one and it just, again, more massive than, than anything that had come. Which was the one that you did on that occasion? That was the, the semi-charmed life cover, my third. Oh, album. okay. That yeah. was the first yeah, one yeah. I ever did. And, um, and, and, you know, even I did like another Taylor Swift cover all these years later that also blew up. And now it's my number one song on Spotify. So it's just like a bunch of different things all happened to catch within the span of like six months. Okay. And, um, and I just kind of kept riding the wave and, and I'm still kind of riding that wave. I think I saw you say once, maybe it was, maybe it was when you were on Finn McKenzie's podcast, you'd mentioned around that time as well. Was there a TikTok challenge around love story by yes. Taylor Swift and that kind of, that kind of did wonders for you. Yeah. That, for that was kind of the thing that, you know, it was starting to grow slowly and then that TikTok. Mm happened and then it just like went all the way up and <laughs> and um it was you, you can't ever predict these things i didn't know when i made that that it would do anything you know i was just really passionate about the the treatment i had come up with and the 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 kind of production behind the video element and i was you know i was just making stuff i was so excited yeah. to to have the time and opportunity to to make things it, it felt so like I was a kid again, just learning how to play music and really getting it. You know, you're just like sitting there with your guitar, learning everything you can. It was, it kind of reignited that passion that, that I had somehow, you know, pragmatically had to put on the back burner for career things and family things. So sure. Sure. So it, it's been, it's been really invigorating to be able to get back into it all. Like before all this blew up, did did you dabble playing in bands at all or or have you always kind of just focused on like the studio side of things and you know recording covers by yourself like did, were, were you never like involved in the in the band scene where you grew up you know i i had like a, a little kind of punk band in in high school in my early college days and uh okay we would play like super hyper hyper local shows like um you know the bar in the town yeah. next to where we grew up and uh and and actually after college, um, maybe like 2016 or so, my my best friend, he actually kind of predicted the whole like emo night covers thing. Really? He was like, okay. man, the people that are going to bars now listen to the music that we listened to when we were growing up. They're not listening to Led Zeppelin or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. the the uh, the the stereotypical dad rock, you know, you walk into a bar and you see a band playing yeah. uh, Leonard Skinner or I don't know what you, you know, whatever. And, um, yeah. and so I did like, you know, the little event band with him for a while. And, uh, you know, we did, you know, the good Charlotte simple plan and all this stuff. And, um, you know, it, it, it was the same thing. We would just kind of play local shows and get some pocket money, but I never, I never was, a, a part of anything that was, that had any traction <laughs> before this. When the traction like started, like you said, you saw the, with like the Taylor Swift thing, like the numbers just went up crazily what i mean what were some of the other things that happened around that time like with the attention you were getting like i mentioned i well i guess it was probably about a year ago that you're on finn mckenzie's podcast but like i guess like people like that paying attention to you went like were there any notable examples of that where you're like oh wow this is really yeah okay something's happening yeah you know um it was it was so strange i you know the bands that i would cover you know sometimes would actually acknowledge the cover and appreciate it and that was just, uh, you know, mind blowing to me that you know, there's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. there's thousands of covers of these songs and, um, you know, it's, it, it's nothing new, <laughs> but I guess, uh, whatever I was doing resonated with, with certain artists that, you know, they would share it. And, 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 uh, then I got, you know, attention from a label out of just out of nowhere, mm -hmm. uh, pure noise kind of messaged me. Of course. Yeah. Um, and I guess they saw something in me, some potential, because you know, I, you know you, I go back to those videos in like 2020, and they're pretty rough by my standards now. <laughs> um, right. You know, I I still was, I've gotten you know just by virtue of doing it every day for the past couple of years, I've been able to to grow and and right. have things present so much better. But even back then, um, you know, they they were reaching out and that's when we decided to do this kind of covers compilation that kind of integrated a lot of the, the bands on their label and had this cool theme to it. So, um, and yeah, I had my, my manager now, he, he reached out to me 
probably like five or six times. Um, I just, I thought it was like a scam at first. He was like, Hey, really? I can help. You know, I can help. I see what you're doing. I love it. And I want to help. Yeah. And I was like, I, who, who am I? Why would somebody be reaching out to me? And, um, and so I, he ended up getting my attention and we talked on the phone. And, and so, uh, you know, I got, you know, kind of involved with a management company right when Pure Noise was wanting to seal the deal. And so they helped me find a lawyer and all this stuff. I was just completely new to all of it. Oh, well, so they, so Pure Noise and, and the management sort of came came about at the same sort of time, did they? Yeah, it all kind of happened, okay. you know, within weeks or, or maybe a month of each other. And uh, it was just, I was still working um, at, at the theater. You know, we were kind of dormant. Wow. But yeah, I was still, you know, employed there. It was connected to a university. So I had, you know, like, uh, over here in America, you know, that, that means something, you know, with your health insurance and, and all this stuff. And yeah. And I was very hesitant to like, let go of that. I, I, I probably did both jobs for a full year, like a calendar year before I decided, okay. I think I'm, I think I'm stable and comfortable enough in the entertainment realm to right. be able to, to leave. And it was, it was a big deal, but, um, you know, everybody was super patient with me and they helped me, you know, they, nobody forced me to quit. I'll say that. Um, right. but yeah, it, it, it became, uh, clear that, that it was going to work out. And, and so, yeah, you know, just a lot of validation that I, that I wasn't used to, um, and a lot of encouragement and, and it's just been, I mean, it, it's when I stop and think about it, it's it's wild, um, what what has happened. But, but yeah, that's kind of yeah. the the rundown, I guess. So now now that this is basically like your full time gig, like what what's what's a typical week look like for you? I guess you you must be bit like if you're putting out content like covers as frequently as you do, that must you must dedicate a lot of time to that. But yeah, like how how talk us briefly sure. through a week in your life in uh, at the beginning of 2023 well you know i do spend a lot of time on the U- the weekly youtube stuff um yeah it's it's kind of it's a passion project still where you know i i will you know we'll pick a song over the weekend or maybe the week before and then i'll maybe demo some stuff out over the weekend if i if i feel like it but monday i yeah. i have a a co-producer that that comes over for a few hours every weekday and so monday morning we're going to start on that you know demo on the arrangement and kind of get things in place uh tuesday we're usually tracking uh i'll get scratch vocals in and we'll do uh, final guitars and bass uh yeah. drums are kind of like scratched in roughed in then wednesday we'll usually track like drums because I, I have like an electronic drum set that I treat like a real kit in terms mm-hmm. of for the video portion, I'll, you know, I'll sit down and I'll play the drums. Um, and, uh, and then Thursday is kind of like a mad dash to, to throw it all together, get a mix and master on it. We do everything in house. And, um, and then, you know, we'll post that at 1 PM on Thursday. And then Friday we usually kind of, do a, a, a debrief of the previous week's song. We'll do a little podcast okay. for for my Patreon and YouTube members where we'll talk about like, all right, what 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 was the feedback from last week's video? What were our favorite parts? Yeah. You know, how did how did we feel it went? And so that's kind of usually a, a pretty good example of a of any given week. So I, I'm I'm starting at like 10 a.m. every day. We'll break uh, after my guy leaves, I'll track some more. Uh, my wife gets home, we have dinner, we watch some shows and then I go back upstairs for another couple hours and knock out some editing and whatever. So it's really, yeah. it takes a lot of time. I think yeah, um, yeah. the, the part of the, the, the output quality is an, a consequence of that time spent. I think the moment I start to make it into like a machine or just like start outsourcing things, I'm, I'm so terrified that it'll lose kind of the spark of, of what it is. And I think that's just the eternal uh, struggle of all content creators is how much to keep on your plate versus the economy of time and everything. But luckily I love doing it. I love the source material. 
I love the process. It's such a great way to learn things um, just by doing it, seeing what worked, yeah. what didn't, and iterating, doing it again very next week. Um, I've been able to hone the craft of production and, and really get into what it means to make a song and uh, the, the, the existential parts of that, the technical parts of that, the artistic parts of that. I'm constantly thinking about all of this. And so it's, it's, it's given me such a great toolkit for hopefully in the future, you know, other bands want to come to me to produce a, an EP or whatever. I, I will have the skill set to be able to do that because I put in all the hours here on, on the front end. So that's kind of my ethos on how I, how I, um, you know, navigate all that. From everything you just said there, there's just two, two follow up yeah. questions I have. Um, first i'll go with the first one this is like not related to music but just just curious what 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 shows are you and your wife watching at the minute well uh the last of us is very good we we just started that. yeah i keep hearing good things yeah okay no no spoilers here but um yeah you know the the second episode just came out and um it's 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 been great we actually watch a lot of youtube ourselves i i i'm i'm more entrenched yeah. in the world of youtube than I am, uh, you know, Netflix or Hulu or whatever. Right. So um, I like I like video game content. I like kind of funny stuff, and and so I don't. I'm not necessarily in there watching other people do covers and stuff, but uh, I mm -hmm. have my own little niches on on YouTube that we like to watch. So, so yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, I was going to ask you about what what YouTube you consume, <laughs> which seems an obvious thing to ask you. What what I mean specifically what, is there any um music related content channels that, that are your go-tos that you'll watch the updates of honestly i i like more of the technical stuff um eric okay. valentine has he's a producer in la yeah he did um young and the hopeless didn't yeah he? he did good charlotte he did uh third eye yeah. blinds debut he did uh the smash mouth oh, record did he? okay that has you know yeah uh, what's it all-star he, he he produced all-star all-american rejects went to him um and taking back Sunday, of course, did louder now with him. And he has a channel where he will open up the session for like make damn sure and show you every single track, every single plug in. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's such a oh, resource. Wow. Um, he's kind of a genius. And, uh, you know, I'll like, I'll, I'll watch stuff like that where I'm, I'm learning, getting insights from other yeah. producers on how things work and the technical stuff, you know, which, which plugins are, are, you know, worth my time and all this um it's it's a tough thing with with the art art part of it because i i don't want to i don't want to dilute my 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 process or or you know watch somebody else do a treatment of something and then that somehow sub subconsciously shows up in my own output later i i'm very much like i'll I, I have to be yeah. mindful that i that i don't like integrate um, something I see and then spit it back out, uh, without, you know, proper credit. So, you know, I, it's yeah. tough. I, I, I think the closer I am to the thing, the more I don't want to watch other people do the same thing in a weird way. I don't. Yeah. I, I see what you're yeah. saying. Okay. Um, the other thing I was going to ask, you mentioned on a Friday when you're kind of debriefing you um, do your thing for your, your Patreon subscribers and stuff. But like you talk about the, the feedback that, that your songs get sure. um, just, just interested in the kind of just sort of general comments that you receive and stuff. So from my perspective, from the outside, I feel like people are generally very positive about the, the covers you've done, the, the, the content you've made. Um, do you, do you get much negative feedback? Overwhelmingly positive i it's it's yeah in, it's okay. incredible the insight and the 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 way with words that people have in the comments it, it a lot of people um have a lot of very nice things to say um and yeah. you know i it's it's tough for me to reckon with because i don't it, it's hard to conceptualize your your work going out uh, well, it's hard for me to conceptualize um, just how many people are listening to it and just how many people are like yeah. finding joy in it. And it's um, it's it's that's the best part is where you know somebody will say I, I just I'm having a rough day, but this really put a smile on my face. And um, 
But yeah, most of the not positive comments have to do with kind of getting in the weeds of the technical stuff. Like, uh, you know, you, you called this band an emo band, but I don't know if they're actually an emo band or, you know, right. you, you're trying yeah. to emulate this specific artist, but you kind of, I feel, I feel like you kind of missed the mark on this portion of it or whatever. So, you know, and all that's valid. It's, I'm not, I'm not like over here doing a hundred percent perfect recreations. And um, it's yeah. everybody's experiences with the, these artists that I'm referencing are different. And so something I pick up from an artist that I want to replicate, somebody else may not really uh, have paid attention to that aspect or they, they took something different away from it. And so I try really hard to, to take it all in with yeah. a grain of salt, I guess. I, I want to be aware of what people are saying. I want to be uh, receptive to any you know feedback or criticism. Um, at the same time, I, I can't, I can't, you know, people always say you can, if you, if you ignore the the bad comments, you kind of have to ignore all of them <laughs> because, uh, right, you know, okay. there's going to be crazy amount of love on this side and maybe some hate on this side. And, you know, th there's always going to be that dichotomy and then, you know, several people in the middle, but, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go around thinking like, oh, I'm the best thing to happen to music ever. <laughs> so <laughs> the the learning curve on how to deal with comments has been um, a big part of this, a big part. Um, okay. you know, trying to figure out how to interpret people's what what they say and know, you know, it's it's text. So it's hard to know the intention behind things and the inflection that people um, say yeah. so I, I like to give people Absolutely. the benefit of the doubt I like to try to be gracious but it is it is hard sometimes because they they do know how to push buttons if they want <laughs> yeah you must get more and more used to dealing with things like that I guess yeah. um you mentioned before um like when, when this all started blowing up for you like noticing some of the bands that you would cover like either sharing it or commenting on it like what what were some of those what were some examples of that that really uh stood out to you and made you excited and i guess that you know going up until the modern day like recent examples yeah yeah that. um uh, the bare naked ladies I, I did a cover of their one week and uh they actually shared yeah. it um did they really? it was okay. it was really cool they they were like super stoked on it so uh that one was nice and then you know smash mouth i i did a cover of all star they acknowledged that and um you know i've had like Ian, I think his name is Ian, the bass player from Newfound Glory. He reached out to me. And yeah, he that's was, right. He was saying he was yeah. like a big fan of what I was doing, and it, it really meant a lot. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, being able to work with Tom, uh, Tom Denny, he had been aware of what I was doing before we hooked up for this album. Yeah. And and uh, he's kind of like a very, very much a kindred spirit to me. I think his energy is is very similar to mine and our writing styles well, I'll, I, maybe it's not fair to say our writing styles are this are similar because I probably lifted my yeah. style from him. <laughs> so it's more, it's more in that vein, but, um, and then, um, you know, I've seen, I, I've been in Nashville a few times. I saw a couple of other artists, uh, Chad from newfound glory went, went out of oh, his yeah. way to, yeah. to say something nice to me. And, um, uh, cool. And yeah, I mean, more recently, I'm trying to think. Uh, Yellow Card did they shared my cover of their song? I think the All American Rejects shared something recently, uh, and it's just it seems to be happening more and more. Where I think these artists are are in a position to really appreciate the impact they've had on the culture and the scene, and to see it manifest in in this in these new ways is probably uh, yeah. really cool for them. I, I would imagine. You mentioned doing some shows like a year ago, and this is obviously just a short run. Do you think, do you have plans to do like more live stuff like in the coming year, like like full on tours, anything like that? Or would that disrupt too much from obviously the routine that you were, you were telling me about? Before? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough balance. Um, I, yeah. I'm very much like a, an introvert. I like being at home with my cats okay. and my wife. And uh, it, yeah. I, that is to say, every time I go out and I'm on the stage, there's just this energy and this rejuvenating factor that you, you walk away and you're like, 
that really did something for my soul here. And, uh, and so it, it's, mm-hmm. I really love playing and I love meeting people. I love talking to people at the shows. And, um, again, that's, that's kind of what I did for years. I would show up at my venue and, and we would just be there all day, uh, knocking stuff yeah. out. And that was, you know, it's a hard, a hard long day. And then you go home at like 2 AM and, and it's over and you feel very accomplished and a little bit wiped. But, um, and, yeah. and so it is, uh, it is a tough thing to, to reckon with because the more I tour, the less I can put into the YouTube videos. And, uh, and maybe that will just be a natural consequence of, of how things shift. Maybe I will find more value in, you know, playing more. It's, it's tough though, because, uh, what is a, what is a live show supposed to look like for me is, is a question I'm still trying to answer. Right. Yeah. Um, do I hire a band? Uh, do I continue to do solo stuff and try to like one man band it all? Or, or is there like a, a different thing I haven't thought of yet that would be more accurate representation of, of what I do. Um, yeah. And I get, I guess, you, you know, there's always like, do you, use the platform you're on now to kind of start writing more and more of your own original stuff and see, see what, what you can do with that. I guess, honestly, you know? there is uh, an originals album promised in the, in the contract. So, okay. um, you know, that's, that's a very daunting thing. Um, I, yeah, I usually have the benefit of, of a lot of the chords and the lyrics and the melodies written out for me and I can just have fun with them. Right. With a cover. Right. Um, yeah. And so I've, I've been trying to flex the writing muscle more. I've done some co-writing sessions with a few people just to kind of get my feet wet. And, um, and then there's yeah. the question of what does my original music even need to sound like, or, or what do I want it to sound well, like? Oh yeah, that's it. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I dabble in these, in so many different variations of genres and different things. Yeah. Um, you know, of course I have my personal things that I love the most. Um, but uh you know that's always changing too so it's like wait yeah. what 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 are your personal things you love the most right now a lot of it is not pop punk <laughs> i'll say um interesting i, I really okay. loved that casey musgraves record golden hour when it came out mm-hmm. uh, i love the band pine grove they're they're kind of yeah. you know in the emo folksy country yeah, you know that they, yeah. they're kind of the blueprint. I feel like they've managed to perfectly find this balance of like uniqueness uh, and really artistic expression that I love. And then bands like Young the Giant that are kind of in the indie space in yeah. the 1975. They're doing a lot of interesting things sonically that you know I yeah. we have the capacity to do. And um, you know, obviously, I love textures like a like a a pedal steel guitar um, from, you know, like a lot of country music will use that. And, and I want elements. I want, I want elements from a lot of different things to be able to naturally just coalesce and come together. And uh, to yeah. say they naturally coalesce and come together takes a lot of like finessing and work and, and iterations on, you know, uh, songwriting uh, at a base level. Uh, and so it's a lot to process for me and it's a lot to, uh, take yeah. in, you know, who's going to produce it. Um, you know, how much of the writing am I going to do solo versus these writing sessions? And it's just, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, there's infinite possibilities in front of me, which is almost kind of the problem sometimes. Um, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But, uh, but it's, it's, it's it, I'm excited to, to dive into it and, and get to work on it. I think we want to put it out pretty soon to follow up this record um so okay, maybe okay I, I hesitate to say before the end of the year but uh depending on vinyl production and whatnot you know <laughs> but um but yeah it's it's and then once i have original music it becomes a lot more clear what a live show may look like because then i could just play my own songs <laughs> which i don't i don't get the luxury exactly. of doing right now and so it's kind of this cross right, between like right. a, a, a an emo night versus like a, a a real concert versus just a pure cover band um but it's it's fun to explore you know not every show has to be the same yeah uh not every uh experience uh is is going to be the same so you know last year i, I took out yeah. a band this year i'm i'm not taking out a band 
just because I have to travel so much farther away for these. And so I, I don't really know enough people that I can ask <laughs> to be like, will you take off work and come play music with me? So that's the thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's interesting. It's a lot to navigate, but it's fun. Do people kind of recognize you in the street now? Now that you've kind of obviously you have so many people watching you on YouTube, must happen a little bit now. It does has it? happened here in my hometown probably a dozen yeah. times, and I always, um, I'm always kind of taken aback. I'm just kind of in my, I'm doing my thing, and somebody's <laughs> like, "Do you have a YouTube channel or, or something like?" They'll ask like some <laughs> question. I'm like, "I do," yeah, and yeah. and um, once I'm kind of over the shock that they know who I am, it's it's always such a cool yeah. moment because you know they'll introduce themselves and and sometimes they'll even tell me you know, like how they found me or what they love. And sometimes it's, yeah. it's kind of the deeper cuts that I, I didn't really know that anybody uh, appreciated or, or, or even heard. So um, I have, I've had nothing but positive interactions with people in real life. And, and um, I think the other day, the other day, the most recent one, where was I? Oh, I was at guitar center and, um, I was oh, yeah. grabbing some stuff for this tour and the guy rang me up and he, I put my information in and he was like, he saw the name and then <laughs> yeah. he didn't say anything. And, but then at the end of the transaction, yeah. he was like, do you have a, do you have a, are you on YouTube by chance? And I'm like, <laughs> I am. And he, he was like, I, I saw the name, but I wasn't sure if it was you or not. And, uh, and so it was, it was kind of funny how, how that works out. But, um, uh, but yeah, I, I'm always happy to talk to people. Do people, I mean, this is strangers and friends and family included, but do you often get people um, giving you requests, like stuff they want to see you do? That must happen a lot, does it? Um, the concepts that I am pitched are like top-notch concepts. That would be a great title. <laughs> that would be a great thumbnail or whatever. But um, yeah. sometimes it, it's hard for me to, to actually conceptualize what the follow-through on the song would be. Uh, like, you know... Okay somebody said, you know, you should take a new fallout boy song and play it as if old fallout boy wrote it. And, uh, it's such a great title. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I feel like people have done that kind of thing a lot, not specifically with, I'm sure they have with fallout boy, but there's been lots of blink mm -hmm. things like that, you know, of the more modern stuff. Like, I mean, not, not that there wouldn't be an audience for it. I'm sure, you know, lots of people would love to see you do that. Yeah. It's, um, it, I, and I have I have gotten legitimate great ideas. Um, the I did like a a country version of a T Pain song last year, um, <laughs> and that was that was um, my co producer's wife. That was her idea. She was just like, "You should do this T Pain song." And I'm like, "It is a really good song. I, I think I'll have to take you up on that." <laughs> so it does work out sometimes. Do you know what I, I'd love to see? You do, I'm just this is there me you getting go. my yes. request, one of many requests in, but I had to I, you know take my chance. But um, you ever listen to Mary Chapin Carpenter? I could see you doing uh, Mary Chapin Carpenter, like big in the '90s, kind of pop okay. country. She did well. She did a cover of Lucinda Williams' "Passionate Kisses," and that is just begging to be done in a okay. pop punk style. I feel like I know that song. I feel like I'm. I feel. I feel like if you played it, I think it. she might have even stopped by our venue back when I was working there. Um. So like, I don't know, five or six years ago, the name sounds familiar in my head, but what passionate kisses you said is the name of the song. Yeah. Okay, passionate I'm writing kisses, it down. Yeah. Check it out. It's a, it's yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun pop song. It's uh, or country pop song. And it's, uh, I always imagined like when I was in bands back in the day, I, like it was always an intention to do a pop punk version <laughs> of that. So there, there's one for your list. If you dig the Love song, that. That is. appreciate it. <laughs> Have you, have, have you made it over this way before? You got much experience with the UK. I, I, you know, I've only left the country one time. It was like tw 2015. All right. Uh, I went to Germany for kind yeah. of like a, a USO style tour where I played drums in this band that was kind of like this small little act that would go to military bases and just bring a little taste of home to uh, their okay their uh, yeah. their base and um. It, it was, it was, that was probably my first time on an actual like tour where we're, you know, in the van with all the gear and we're playing every night. And, um, yeah, it, that, that's kind of the only chance I've had to, to get out of the country, but I'm, I would love to see the rest of it. Yeah. I mean, obviously depending on what happens with, with your live show and, 
you know, going back to what you were saying before, what direction it goes. But like, you know, I could see you being very popular. At, you know, we have Slam Dunk Festival over here, like, you know, being a staple at stuff like that. And, you know, like having very worthwhile tours over here. So be interesting to see if, if, if that's the road. That yeah, it's, it's definitely on the radar as as um as something I'd, I'd like to do one day. So it's just about timelines, I think. Yeah, listen, man. I know, I know you've got a busy day ahead of you. You've got, you've got to travel later and stuff. So, um, I was just going to uh, wrap up with a kind of cut a few sort of quick fire questions that are kind of we. Uh, I say it's so weird saying uh, I because I yeah. just naturally say we because there's only two of us doing this. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, finish with a couple of those if that's cool with you. Unless there's anything we haven't covered that you want to want to kind of. No, I, before, I think I'm good. You want done. you just like the first thing I think of. Just really quick response, is that it? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I should I, I should warn you that some of them are kind of like it's too broad a question, so you know it doesn't have to be your definitive okay. answer. You'll see what I mean. Okay, when I, when I think I, I can roll with that. <laughs> All right, um, right. Let's go. Which one should we do today? Uh, favorite food? I think I have to go with. Um, I think tacos, tacos. It's it's between tacos and pizza, but I think tacos wins. Uh, favorite movie? Uh, oh, The Matrix. I have to say The Matrix. That's kind of a meme. I I, <laughs> I always talk about the first Matrix movie. Yeah, that's a safe choice. Uh, favorite TV <laughs> show? Uh, I'm going to say Community. Favorite band of all time? Favorite band of all time. I think, yeah. I think it's a boring answer, but it has to be Blink-182. They're so... So influential to me, I, they just they found me right at the right age, and uh, I I love those records from you yeah know, like yeah I think that's a fair go to for sort of everyone who's sort yeah. of involved in this genre at our sort of age you know oh yeah o- only beat by MXPX in my personal opinion but that's okay. that's a whole other conversation <laughs> uh, uh, favorite album of all time you can you can fire a couple at me if you want for that one uh, Untitled Blink One Eighty Two uh, is probably a, a huge one. Um, and honestly, um, I might say enemy of the world by four years strong was kind of the album that introduced me to the, the concept that you could go a little heavier and get a little right. rowdier with, with yeah. your music. You don't have to be so radio pop, pop punk. hooks. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that four years strong, I think is probably the biggest direct influence on, um, my guitar writing style. I'll say that. Okay, so of these three previous guests that we've had on this show, you only get to keep the music of one of them. Okay. And this can be your final question. I'm just going to decide who I'm going to fire at you here. Okay. Because I was going to include for you, Strong, but I'm not going mm-hmm. to because you might that might have been an easy pick for you. So I am going to go for Sum 41, New Found Glory, MXPX. You know, I only keep the music of one. Okay, I can only keep one. Man. I, I must confess, I, I'm not super familiar with MXPX. Oh, um, okay. Well, as, as as you can probably tell, that's a sin in my eyes based on what yeah. I said before. It's that's tough uh... to say right, right here to your yeah. face. I don't have to get into them now. Um, yeah. Oh, so, well, that's an easy... You get to cast them aside easily then. Um, I I definitely listened to more Sum 41 uh, than I have Newfound Glory. I think that that slight edge that they have um of like you know dabbling into some more like experimental for pop punk that is genres like that that album chuck that was like super like riffy and kind of heavier and fast and even in their their classic you know all killer stuff like all of that has this uh aggression that's just kind of next level it's 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 less the bubblegum pop of pop punk and more like I don't know. I don't know what to call it, but I, it's, it yeah. grabs me, I think. So I got, I got to go with some 41. Okay. Okay. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. Um, do you know what, man? I think I'll, I think I'll leave it there for today. Um, massively appreciate your time. Uh, it's been, you know, I love what you do. So it's been really cool to get to have some time to chat. Thank hope you, that, hope the, uh, this weekend of shows goes really well. And the album release tomorrow is, uh, everything you hope for. Yeah. So it's, um, it's an exciting time. 
in the in the Alex Melton camp. So uh, definitely, I appreciate uh, getting to talk to you today and, and meeting you. Thanks, man.